Hello, Egg Chasers. It's the Egg Chasers Rugby Podcast, the podcast about rugby that doesn't take itself or the game too seriously. And, uh, well, two-thirds of us are here in the rugby dungeon reflecting on a big day, the Lions squad announcement. JB, yeah. how are you doing? I'm very well, mate. How are you? I'm, I'm all right. Phil's out for dinner. I know, pathetic, isn't it? <laughs> it's outside. I'm de- I know. Who'd want to be outside in this? I'm delighted that he's having a miserable time. <laughs> he will be as well. I haven't been in a, a single pub garden yet, and uh, the weather has has put paid to that for the time being. So I, I went for a pint last night. Went for a nice long walk around Didsbury, and then we stopped off and had a singular pint, and it was lovely. Was Lions the topic of conversation last night? Um, no. The only Lions news that cut through the chatter of daily life, because I was out with civilians yesterday, was uh, Mike Phillips. So did you hear what Mike Phillips tweeted? No. Nope. Tweeted something li- along the lines of, if you're thinking about being a lion tonight, it's not for you. Lions, no. Wow. <laughs> and that did get their attention. So that's the only bit of Lions chat that we had on our Do you our think walk. Courtney Laws or Johnny Hill well. knew? Or Bundy Aki, do you think they knew? Well, I mean, we will hear from Courtney Laws himself very soon. Yes, that's a very good point. On this podcast, uh, we have already brought you two po- uh, podcasts in your feed right now. This is a third, and this one is going to feature two... 2021 British and Irish Lions and also going to feature a very special announcement. If th- Hopefully, through this effort and this time and this graph that we're putting in and, and JB on getting those two, the two guys to be revealed in a little bit on, on the phone when there must have been so many people asking for their time. Uh, if that's not enough to, to get your support by hitting subscribe in your podcast feed, go into our YouTube channel, and supporting us on Patreon, because all these things are only possible because of the people that support us. And thank you very much for that. Patreon.com slash egg chasers. And uh, yeah, get involved. Because um, for, for, a, for a bunch of no ones with no backers, nobody's, starting it from nobody's. the ground up, doing all right. We, we're such nobodies. We were mentioned on The Rock by Stephen Jones. <laughs> that's, that's what nobodies that, that we are. So, uh, yes, yeah, so all of that's coming. And, and, and as JB says, he's managed to fix up I haven't heard the interviews yet. I'm really looking forward to them, but two British and Irish lion. Did you watch the whole live stream or program or whatever you did? Oh, God, it wasn't good, was it? I caught bits and bobs because I was getting ready to Lucky do my radio. You. I was getting ready to do my radio show. So I was keep. I was, truth be told, I was in a meeting and I had it on my phone just glancing over every now and again. But I, I was talking about the NFL draft at the weekend's podcast going, we need to make more of a sense of occasion and, in, and enjoy the process. And I saw a lot of people saying... Can't they just get on with announcing the names? And I understand that. But also, I quite like the the, the um, attempt to make a big event out of it. The problem is, I feel like I've heard it all before. I, no, look, I'm not a good person to ask, okay? Because I'll hold my hands up and say, I'm guilty of being too cool for school. I, oh, I'm not bothered about the Lions. I'm not, And actually, I really am bothered. I didn't even realise I was bothered until after the announcement. I think I was just putting it to one side. And I didn't really enjoy the... I didn't enjoy the production they put on. Not necessarily because it's a bad production, although it wasn't a good production, but that's not their fault. They couldn't do much, I think, because of COVID. Yeah. You know, they couldn't have the usual uh, song and dance. So, you know, that's not their fault. They did the best that they possibly could. But I think the reason I didn't enjoy it is, is because I was trying to put it to the back of my mind. I didn't want to deal with it when it came out. And also, I was silly. I, I fell for a spoof Lions announcement last night, which you should never do. You should never do. What but was there's that? One, there's one making the rounds, wasn't there? Because simultaneously... Uh, the pre- some of the press had got wind of Sam Simmons and Alan Wynne Jones, and disinformation merchants on social media managed to sort of weave that into a League the Lions squad. And I've got to <laughs> say, I did I did fall for it. I did comment comments on that on a few social media groups. So I thought that I knew the team. I didn't know the team. And do you know what? Delighted because I'm very very happy with this team. Yeah, uh, um, a lot of my thoughts on on the youtube videos picking my squad a, a lot of my thought well 29 out of the out of my 36 choices warren gatling picked 37 and we'll get on to that mm. um but 29 of them were the people that that i picked and I, there were if, let's talk about the ones that we didn't see coming top of that list bundiaki do you know i feel stupid for not mentioning him yeah i really do how do we overlook bundiaki he has so many different facets to his game but one more than anything else. We just need to stop that buzz. There's a little buzz on your... Oh. Just try it. There you go, it's gone. Good. Sorry. Yeah. Carry on. Uh, um, one more... Um, 
one facet which is probably more than anything else, which is, is physicality, and they need to get over the line. They the, need to get over the line. The three centres, well, four if you, because um, we we can now assume Owen Farrell is probably the the number one twelve in that squad, or at least is one of the centres. But if you include Owen Farrell, the four centres are. Owen Farrell, Bundy Hackey, Robbie Henshaw, Chris Harris. That's four big men. Yeah. Now, on that, I was talking to a professional centre today. Someone who does this for a living, someone who pays his mortgage by being a centre. He wasn't particularly impressed with the four selections because obviously none of them are ball players, if you think about it. I mean, where are they going to get the extra ball player from? Because there isn't one who sits at fullback looking at this. Maybe Stuart Hogg, because he does flip between. 10 and 15. But but you think back to Warren Gatlin Lions squads before and like I, I instantly thought Jamie Roberts, Jonathan Davis, one of the best Lions centre pairings there's been. J- Jamie Roberts at, in South Africa 12 years ago mm. as well. So it's, you don't, you don't necessarily need it. I, and particularly you've talked about it before, having to get things together and have a simple game plan that 37 guys can, can execute well in a short time frame. Yeah, there is something to that, isn't there? There's maybe something to maybe that. it will be a, a little bit more like that old school thing. And also, South Africa play very much that sort of traditional centre well, centre thing going on with a big old hard running 12. And also, there is Owen Farrell. So it makes me think that m- perhaps Owen Farrell is destined for 12, even if he is picked, picked as a 10. So yeah. I, I don't know. The answer is I don't know. I didn't see this squad selected as it is coming. So, um, so there was, so don't know what there was Bundyaki, and yeah, his his physical attributes have got him in in the squad. Um, the Elliot Daly one. Mm-hmm. Uh, now that's that's for versatility, right? In a small squad. So I mean, don't th- I do I don't think he's first choice in any position, but the fact he can play well, in pretty much thirteen out, he can cover all positions. He be, might be the ideal man to be number twenty three. I think Elliot Daly might be one of those players like. Um. Who was who the who the hell is the guy who used to play at Ulster who and Ospreys and was awesome? He just always got picked. Jared Payne? No, Winger. No. Tommy Bow. Tommy Bow, there you go. Yeah. I think he might be one of those. I think he is a good enough player that he gets picked on his talent alone to play on the wing. I think where he's gone wrong in the last year or so, or two years or three years, is he's been forced into the fifteen yeah. jersey. Yeah, hundred percent. And therefore we don't see the best of him. Now, if he's back on the wing, he is absolutely lethal. And people always talk about moving him into 13. Well, I guess you could do that. I definitely think he's an option on the bench. But I think him and um, Anthony Watson on either wing is electric. Oh, there again. As is Josh Adams. That, that's the As one, is Reece Summit. That's the one area. Like, bearing in, I'm giving myself a, a little out here because that he picked a 37th man. So... Every single one. That's the uh, that's the area I was most pleased with in my selection. I got all six of the back three nailed on. Did you? Good. I, I called. I called no Johnny May. Uh, I called Duan Van der Merwe and had Josh Adams in. Yeah. Well, Duan is. Uh, I and do. Not sure he's going to play a test. Do you, what, what do you think? Uh, no. He's just a bit of a calamity in my mind. Well, no. Well, it's interesting. I looked at some of the statistics from the Six Nations, and he only missed a couple of tackles. Um, I think he's potentially liable to be out of position i i mean i think I, I said i've said already i think it's the three fullbacks will be the the test starters watson williams hog they're, they're your back three, watson but. williams hog so i think it's hog watson Re summit i thought you were saying uh, i could go daily i could i could, I could pick any of them they're awesome yeah they Adam, are. Adam's is is they're all awesome who's the other one so we've got elliot daly we've got uh Bundyaki, Johnny Hill. I didn't see that one coming. No, I definitely I'm didn't. Pretty sure I said I would have taken Johnny Hill because of his size. You did, and I think that's what he's there for, isn't he? He's just a big, big man. Did you know he used to be at Gloucester? No, he's at Gloucester Academy, and they let him go. Wow, Ugh, like heartbreaking, isn't it? Wow, you get academy credits, you oh, get England word. credits, you get a big man, you probably well, get home some discount. Well, they've, they've got him as a good left foot kicking option as well inside, yeah, which is important. And also someone else in the pack, let's let's mention, Courtney Laws. Uh, how do you want your money? Yes. How do you want your money? Do you want it wired? Do you want cash? We've got a problem here, mate. Yeah. We've got a genuine problem. I'm not sure we can fix this. You're not allowed to gamble, to gamble on rugby, are you? <laughs> is, that, is that getting me off the hook? No. I'll, I'll pay it's you. Not, it's getting you off the hook. Phil's going to have to pay me. 
I feel you're right. Actually, Phil's gonna have to pay me. There, so no... if you missed the podcast at the week uh, on our Lions pod, JB was so certain Courtney Laws would get selected that he uh, he bet me ten. Ten pounds. <laughs> yeah. So do I'm you, not allowed to bet or gamble on rugby. So you're quite right. Phil yeah, will have to pay we'll the ten we'll pounds. Pay that. That's the only way thanks, we can Jay. get on. This is fine. Thanks for saving my job, JB. I appreciate that. Well, thank Phil. Um, <laughs> Cheers, Phil. Here's something. I think I can offer you a bit of insight here. Not much insight, but a bit of insight. Genuinely, Courtney Laws did not know he he was going, as you'll find out later on, uh, because I've pre-recorded an interview with him. Um, but I do know that the coaches were texting people, sniffing around. Now, what's interesting is they seem never to contact the player. It's always a conditioning staff. It's always their mates. It's always someone who maybe if you're an, in, an international in uh, a certain country where a coach is from, they'll they will text the player saying, hey, look, is – make up the player. Is, so, so, for example, I'm not saying this has happened, but uh... – is it McBride, one of the forwards coaches? Yes. Or he, he might text Dan Bigger and go, uh, how's Courts doing? Exactly right. Exactly right. So they don't text directly, but I have seen texts from coaches asking, how is XYZ doing? You know, and we're going to come down and look at it. Well, and uh, well uh, all I can say is um, whether it, uh, w w if it was my £10, I, uh, well, let's say it's Phil's now, but let's, for the sake of it, I think that it would be, if I was allowed to uh, gamble and spend that, mm -hmm. it would be the happiest £10 I would hand over because. Courtney Laws is one of my favourite rugby players for both the way that he operates on the field where he's absolutely brutal and fearless and that's what's got him into the British and Irish Lions but also because he's fearless off the field as well. He's awesome, isn't he? He's, he's, he he's, <laughs> he's a true role model for rugby, what he's achieved and the way he holds himself. There is nobody more authentic than Courtney Laws on and off the field. And that's what I really admire about him. He takes so much crap from people mm. for just speaking his mind and saying what he thinks with totally reasonable, rational thoughts. People give him all sorts of crap and he doesn't care. And then he goes out on the field and he behaves with the same kind of belligerent... Uh, your, I'm intensity. Add, intensity, yeah. And intensity. I absolutely love him. And with that, let's, let's, let's hear from Courtney then. JB, fair play for getting this, mate. How are you, mate? Very good, thank you. So, um, you were pretty certain I guess I'll go make earlier on in the week that you weren't going to get a call. Were, were you serious about that or were you just playing it cool? Uh, yeah, I was serious because I haven't played any, any rugby. Do you know what I mean? Like, I literally I played two games for England in the last year. Um, so, I just didn't think that with the form that some of the other guys were in that He'd go with some somebody that hadn't played as much rugby. I know, like I've got a lot of history in that. But then, um, always in the back of my mind, I was like, I'm probably not a bad pick because I can play six. I can play second row. There's no, there's nobody else really like me still in terms of um, the physicality, ball carrying, big hitting, and can still jump in the line out kind of um, stuff. So I knew, I, I knew I had that going for me, and that I might, I might get in because of that. But I couldn't. I, d I didn't see it. Um, yeah, that's basically exactly what I thought. Which is how how are you going to go go about beating South Africa? Well, you're going to need something. And uh, yeah, I'm I'm basically in the same. I, I had the same line as line of thought as you, which is it's almost like a necessity. Yeah. Uh, now, last time South Africa played, I can't believe this. Last time South Africa played, it was World Cup final. Obviously, yeah, you, were the, you were on the wrong, wrong end of that. Uh, mm. Do you have a score to settle with them personally? And also, how do you go about beating them now you know what you know? Um, I don't. I wouldn't say I've got a personal score to settle, although, of course, um, I'm a competitive person and, you know, we're going there to win 100%. So, um, and then in terms of going about beating them, I think first and foremost, you have to match them physically. Um, and then you, you have to, I guess, uh, be able to, put your game plan onto them and, and execute it properly. And I think with the quality of player that we've got and the, the kind of wheels and power we've got in the in the in the backs there, we're, we're gonna be all right. As long as we match them in the forwards physically and, and you know scrum line out operates well, then uh, then you're gonna we're we're definitely gonna give ourselves a shot. Now I was looking enough to chat to uh, bigger uh, uh, earlier on today. He says it's really interesting and I guess it applies to you too because you're in a sem similar sort of cap bracket which is 
like he's getting to a, a place in his career now where people don't even text him now when he plays international. It's just one like just just, just one of those things. Yeah. Lions is a different thing altogether. So how busy have you been after your name was announced up um, in training? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had a lot. I still not got through all the replies yet. But yeah, yeah, loads. Literally, my phone's been going off constantly. It, it's absolutely incredible, isn't it? Yeah, it's mad. But it, it is one of them things. It's, it is like the pinnacle of um, a kind of Northern Hemisphere team, or you know, um, the British. The British Lions. It's, if you live on this this little island, this is the pinnacle of, of your rugby, and it comes out once every four years. And not only have you got to be fit, you've got to be in form, mm. you've got to be better than the other players. Do you know what I mean? And you've got to, yeah. And it's just there's no real way of describing how you know difficult it is to to be a British and Irish Lion. Yeah. Now uh, we we spoke about this briefly before. You're not a massive sports fan, but you do love pl- playing the game. Yes, yeah, uh, very much. I'm, uh, yeah, I don't. I'm not a big like fan of watching sports and stuff like that. I'm just a, a good competitor. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I want to play. Um, I want to win, and I want to get better. Whatever I do, whatever sport it is, and um, and I love playing rugby, and I love doing that exact thing. I, I want to better. I'm always. I want to be better. I'm always striving to get better um, and improve myself and. Um, and I love team sports as well because I like being able to do my part for the team. Mm. Yeah, I, I'm always amazed when I say, like, hey, Courts, have you watched uh, Saints? Saints, and you go, no, I've not got BT Sport. It just blows my mind. <laughs> it blows my mind that the only way you can get in, get really into the Lions is if you're picked and, uh, and you're gonna and you're gonna play for them, which is absolutely awesome. Yeah, I know, yeah, it's class. Yeah. Uh, do you do you feel any additional pressure going into this one? Uh. Not, not really. I mean, I suppose I would. I feel like um, I don't feel like it's pressure, but I feel like I've just got to go and kind of show why I've been picked. Mm. But I've got no doubt in my mind that I'm capable of doing that. So I'm not. It, I don't feel any pressured by it. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. I remember looking at all the social media coming out of England during the World Cup, and it just looked like. You were all really well looked after. Very happy camp, and part of that was being able to do all the bits, bits and pieces that you do on tour, whether it be you know eating, eating sushi or you know whatever it is. Mm. Um, how was the last international um, camp that, that 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 you went to? And do you think that all this COVID stuff and the bubbles is going to be more difficult for the Lions? Yeah, I think so, definitely, and I think. Um... I don't know exactly how it's going to work yet, but depending on how much time you're going to have to be away from, especially with so many players with families and stuff like that, yeah. um, it's going to get interesting. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, only time will tell because I don't know exactly what's going to happen yet. But um, in the Six Nations, it was quite tough because um, obviously you have really reduced kind of social time and stuff, like dramatically. And while while that's didn't really bother me because I'm happy either way. Like, yeah, I'm quite happy in my own company, um, and I'm quite happy chilling with the lads and, and being social. So it, it didn't bother me. I just spent more time than I normally would in my room. Um, but I know a lot of boys really struggled, um, and I think that really, um, that really kind of, I don't know, showed on the pitch. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a weird one, isn't it? Right, because I think that. The traditional idea of the Lions, because they're much longer tours than, say, England go away. So, so yeah, yeah, you need a tourist, you need a bit of a lad, someone who's fun to be around. And that's I don't disagree with that. I do think with these bubbles, though, maybe the profile of the Lions has to be a little bit more professional. Not the, not anyway, but you can't really be desperate to get out. I think you've got to be focused on what's going, uh, what's going on around you. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Um, and, yeah, I, don't, I suppose... Uh, we certainly haven't got any hasks this year, but um, <laughs> but uh, no, we'll see. We'll see what the boys are like. Hopefully, hopefully, if we're in our bubble, we can just crack on. Do you know what I mean? And we can mm. spend time together on that. Um, so, but yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. Now, when you're with England, training is brutal, isn't it? It's not like it's not like your club training. It is like a, a level above. Yeah. When you go to the Lions, do they lay off you a bit? Because I guess you're already the best 
I mean, you're already the best of the, of the four nations anyway. If you're not fit by this point, is there any point in beasting you? What is the what is the regime? Where do they think they're going to get the most out of you as a team? Um, so yeah, the, I think the first. I remember the first couple of weeks, or I didn't play in the first um, game that we had on tour, and I remember we did a training session that was quite tough and had a bit of fitness in it, and that, but nothing, nothing like unbelievable, but it was, it was pretty tough. But mm. generally, no, the the camps are not as, or in my experience from from the last tour, uh, England camps quite a bit tougher, yeah, um, and yeah, the the sessions you are a lot more physical, um, a lot more intense. Um, and I think that, I think it's just t two very different teams, um, to be honest. And I don't think, I think the Lions, although it's obviously we want to be, we're there for a reason, it's also there to be really enjoyed. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's something that happens once every four years. And I think everyone wants to go out, out there and enjoy it and really, you know, um, really appreciate uh, being out there and it's not the same way you you know you do it every I don't know three months every year 